Hey, welcome to the studio. Diana here today with a little Distress Oxide ink play. And I had been on the fence about getting the inks, but decided to get the primary triad, which I think of as the worn lipstick, the fossilized amber, and the faded jeans. I also got, uh, because I love the colors, Iced Spruce and uh, the other one was oh, Cracked Pistachio. That's such a wonderful bright green to me. I, and I would recommend if you want to get just dip in that, that you go with that primary triad. I'll have everything linked below and further notes over on my blog about uh, you know, what colors I would recommend starting off with if you don't want to make a huge investment. I'm just doing what uh, Tim Holtz calls the wrinkle-free. I've wiped some of the ink right onto my craft mat. You can use any kind of slick surface and sprayed it heavily with oh, mister and then dipped in these tags. I'm just using tags here and uh, that's the pink and here goes a little of that fossilized amber and some of the faded jeans so that's the primary triad right there spritz 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 you can already see the inks oxidizing and separating and as you can see here you can get grays and browns with with this technique I love the way that yellow uh, separates. It's a very, in, these are very interesting inks. I'm really glad I purchased them. Really important to completely dry these inks before uh, adding another layer. So I'm just illustrating that here. finishing drying there and now I'm going in with the cracked pistachio. I chose this color because it is a very bright green and I uh, like to have some brights in my arsenal there and I'm going direct to paper here lightly just lightly wiping the distress pad directly on. I know I won't get any mud if I use the yellow and the green with the blue because those are all compatible colors. Doing a little spritzing action here. I'm going to do some ink blending now and I've just grabbed that um, just a cosmetic wedge. You can use a mini blending tool if you'd like and just laying the ink directly on top. Now be careful in between everything. It's best to work with a heat gun so you can constantly be drying these in between. The pigment inks are wet and stay wet a little longer of course like any pigment ink would so you can hasten that by hitting it with the heat gun or, or if you have a heat tool of some kind. Uh, just be careful with the heat gun keep it moving and um, I just like the way these are coming out too. They are, they do fade back as as they dry. I love that pop of green so I'm adding that. You can see it's a little murky and a little bit gray down and to me that's that's not a bad thing as long as there's some bright pop in there someplace I do I don't mind the, the murky and you can go right over murky with the oxide inks they're opaque I should say they are opaque uh, when they're applied directly or heavily as soon as you add water they sort of do lose their opacity
trying to find a uh, bit of clean. I love these little finger daubers. They're really nice to use. And I'm going right, I just cleaned it off on a rag, and I'm going right in and uh, stenciling over, uh, once again, a dried uh, ink. You just just remember the key to these is to remember to keep drying. It's not, it's like the distress, regular distress inks. Keep drying and then you can build up layer upon layer. But where the distress inks will go gray and muddy on you, these really won't as long as the second layer is opaque. I can pretty much, I could pretty much uh, cover up that pink I'm working on right now but I love the blended color there, but you could literally make that yellow um, and then spray it and reveal some of the pink underneath it. It's, it's just tons of stuff to play with and I'm sure I'll be coming back with quite a few. You can see how wet that is. Uh, quite a few uh, videos on that. It's kind of a Tim Holtz day. I'm using his stencils. I'm using tags. <laughs> oh, we all loved him. He, he's amazing. Now I'm just using those finger daubers again using a different stencil. Love this square stencil. Oh, this is this one and that dots one really are like two of my favorite stencils. And well, I'll pick this up in a second and you can see the gray that comes. So I don't want you to think that there's not going to be any gray. There will be if you start spraying things and whatnot, but there's a gray blue and uh, it's perfectly beautiful. I also wanted to talk about the finish that the Distress Oxides uh, leave. I, I, it's a beautiful, soft, chalky finish, but it does not rub off on your hands. It is a really, I love the finish. It's just gorgeous. And I'm going over that pink area with the brown, with the green paint. So that's red and green going together. And you can see that it will produce brown. They weren't the, the undercolor wasn't completely dry. Now I'm going to spritz it and you're going to see this uh, oxidation which is super cool. Uh, coming in close on that so you can really have a look at that oxidation. And if you pick it up it, you can really see it there. You can see the ink pushing out. And one of the cool things I did discover about these oxides is if you do spray something, like I'm spraying that um, one of those metal metallic sprays from Tim, uh, it could pick up the inks if you put something on top of it. And there's some Lindy's Stardust. I love that stuff. Man, it's awesome. But if you leave it alone, it might just, it just sort of reacts very vaguely and it's not super, doesn't become white. So you can see that effect there. It didn't react much at all with that. And again, I think that's a pretty good thing. I also tried stamping on top using archival ink. And you'll see that later the, in the pictures that are coming up. I worked on top of these a little bit with embossing and the archival ink did fade a little bit as it dried, but um, I'm going to, I'll test some more different inks with it and see how they go. I figured the archival would be best and I don't know, not necessarily maybe. We'll see what happens. And here's just some tags I finished off and a card I finished off. Just having some fun with, with everything. Um, 
I'll be back on Friday for Joggle's uh, It Joggle's blog and with the card. And in the meantime, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks so much for that. See you soon.